out after this presentation. All right, so good evening. Uh, thank you all for being here. I greatly appreciate it. It gave me something to do today to prepare for this presentation. Um, I hope you're all healthy and safe um, at home and managing through online classes and working. Uh, today we are going to be talking about personal statements. Uh, my name is Colleen Tusher. I am a mock interviewer at the Career Center. I've actually been working at the Career Center for now four years, which sounds like a long time because I worked there in undergrad. Um, and I'm currently getting my master's in human resources at the School of Labor and Employment Relations. Uh, just a little bit about this presentation before we get started. Typically this presentation is more interactive, of course, if it's in person. Uh, this is actually the first presentation I have given over Zoom, and so bear with me as we get through the one activity together. Um, I absolutely understand if you are not comfortable uh, speaking during this presentation, but if you are, feel free to unmute at any time and uh, give your input. And also, if you have any questions, it would be wonderful if you just made a little note because we'll address all of your questions at the end. Okay. So before we get into actually writing the personal statements, I just want to briefly talk about the different types of graduate programs. Uh, so it depends on, of course, what you're applying to, and that's how you'll figure out how to write your personal statements specific to the program, but you could be pursuing your master's degree, you could be pursuing your professional degree, your doctoral degree, as well as a combination of degrees. So actually the application process, you all are probably very familiar with the application process that um, is required for your specific school. And so I'll just give a brief overview of the application process. So to begin, you're going to research the program, then you're going to, of course, write and revise the personal statement, and we'll get way more into depth on how to do that. Uh, don't forget to secure letters of recommendation. Typically, I, I don't know for certain if there's like a specific number of the amount of time you should give someone to write your letter of recommendation, but I gave all of my uh, professors and managers that I reached out to, I gave them a month just because they're really busy. I'm sure it would take them an hour if they actually sat down, but you want to give them as much time as possible um, to write the, a good letter of recommendation. Of course, uh, prepare for your admissions exam as well as don't forget to submit your official script official transcripts and apply as early as you can. Even if there's a deadline, apply once you have all of the materials ready. Okay, so where to begin? This seems um, very obvious, but make sure you're actually reading the instruction manual because this is gonna include the question prompt, the character limits, and as well as tips for writing your personal statement. Something to keep in mind is you wanna make sure you understand your audience. And so a majority of the time, it's going to be admissions committee that's reading your personal statement, but sometimes it's not, and so just be aware of that. So typical personal statement common questions. Um, so I remember when I applied to my graduate program, I had to write a personal statement and I was the biggest procrastinator ever about it. And the only reason I actually sat down and ended up writing it one day is because a professor who I reached out to to write my letter of recommendation, she uh, actually said, I need to see your a personal statement before writing your letter of acceptance. And so that actually encouraged me to sit down and, you know, spend a day in Starbucks and write out a pretty rough draft, but that way I just gave her something to work with. Um, and so some common questions that um, might be asked in the personal statement is, what motivates you to pursue graduate study? Why are you interested in your field, school, program? Um, if you're applying to medical school, the personal statement might just be, why do you want to be a doctor? It's a very vague question. And so that's why a lot of students, you know, almost get intimidated just because it is such a broad uh, statement. And so don't let that intimidate you because we'll, t we'll talk about specifically what you can include. Um, but at this time, I would love if you all on a piece of paper or on your computer can just pick one of these questions and I'll give you about two minutes or so and just do bullet points. Just if you pick the first question of what motivates you to pursue graduate study, 
um, just include a few bullet points and then I would love if one or two of you could share some of your bullet points or ideas um, afterwards. And so go ahead and do that now. And feel free to let me know if you have any questions about doing this activity. All right, I'll give everyone one more minute and then we'll come back together to discuss. All right, does any brave soul want to volunteer to just give us a super brief uh, answer to any of these questions? Any volunteers? Yeah, so. Um, I guess my motivation to go to graduate school would be to further my expertise and knowledge in uh, my desired field. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, that's perfect. I mean, that's definitely like a good place to start. Just putting almost anything on paper helps with the personal statement because it is pretty intimidating. Um, if I was going to pick one of these questions, I think if I had the option, of course, uh, typically they just give you the one question, but um, if my personal statement asked like what makes me stand out as a strong candidate, I think that I would have talked about like my two experiences as a human resource intern, because a lot of the times people who are pursuing my degree might not have that experience. And so that might set me apart from other candidates applying. Does anyone else want to share what they jotted down? Please. All right, that's okay. We will keep going. Okay, so ways to prepare. We talked about this, but reading the prompt is the first thing. Researching your specific program because the more detailed and the more specifics you can tie in from that program in your personal statement, the better. Because it's so, so say for example, if you are applying to multiple different medical schools, I would encourage you in your personal statement to tailor each personal statement or at least a section of the personal statement to that medical school. You'd wanna, if possible, talk about courses and why specifically you're interested in that medical school. And then also um, sit down and really think through two to three meaningful experiences that will support your goal. And so I mentioned this, but a big part of my personal statement when applying to grad school was talking about my previous internships uh, within HR departments because that was how I really solidified that I want to continue my education and get a master's in HR. And so I would encourage all of you to do that as well. So the actual writing process, uh, you want to develop a game plan for what you want to say and um, make sure you have topics you want to cover. So like any essay you've written in your entire life, you're going to have an introduction, you're going to have typically three body paragraphs and then a conclusion. Um, make sure just to write a draft, like for, for uh, personal statements, like I always tell students like process over perfection, like put something on paper, 
typically, uh, it depends on the school that you're applying to, but I say typically personal statements are about two pages long. And so putting something on paper and then making, just having something written down and then you're able to talk to other people and get other people's ideas, like that's the best place to start. I will say, uh, personally, like when I made my first rough draft, I sent it to about five people to read and everybody gave me conflicting things. Like they all said completely, I love this paragraph. And then another person said, I hated this paragraph. And like, I had really honest feedback, which was great. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that it is your personal statement and it's how you want to describe yourself to this school. And so after you revise and obtain feedback, one of the cool things that you, the University Career Center offers is you can actually submit your personal statement online and receive feedback uh, via email through the Career Center, which is amazing because right now we are all at home, we're all bored. And so if you sit down one day, write a draft, you can actually submit it to the Career Center. And then following um, them giving you feedback, it takes about three to five days, you can schedule an appointment. Um, with the person who reviewed your personal statement so they can clarify any feedback they gave you. And then from there, you want to revise again. So effective personal statements, they answer and they address really who you are as a person, what you would like to study and why, the types of contribution or impact you would like to make and why, or why this program you're applying to. And then you also want to include um, how going to this program can help you reach your goals. So some important tips. Um, I am, like I mentioned, waited a really long time to actually sit down and write my personal statement. I completely understand it is difficult to sit down and write a really important aspect of applying to graduate school, but try not to wait until the last minute, even if it's you set um, a deadline on your calendar and you have a friend keep you accountable. And I, I am not joking when I say I told my sister, if I don't have a rough draft by Friday due, I'll Venmo you $5. Like setting those uh, devices that'll help you and keep you accountable helped for me. And so it might help for you guys as well. Um, as I mentioned, consider your audience. So think about who's going to read this. You want to focus on your actions and your accomplishments, not necessarily uh, your ideas. So a lot of it is, it's almost like you're taking your resume and telling the story from some of the experiences you've had. Of course, you can write about um, any personal experiences you've had, and we'll get into those a little bit later. But um, as I mentioned, like, Asking others to review your personal statement is so, so critical, but ultimately it is your story. And then do not forget to proofread. There should be no grammatical errors whatsoever in your personal statement. Um, you will probably read it a hundred times if you're anything like me. So definitely make sure there's no grammatical errors. So topics you must cover in your personal statement. So what motivated you to become a doctor? What motivated you to pursue your MBA? You're going to talk about the motivation and you're going to talk about the experiences that motivate you, motivated you to pursue this doctorate degree or graduate degree. Um, you also wanna provide evidence that you're committed, committed to this choice, especially if you're signing on to go to medical school. It is a long journey and so you wanna talk about that in your personal statement. Um, I think it's really easy to if you're going into really any occupation that's going to be service focused, so helping people, it is so easy to say, I wanna help people and that's why I wanna pursue this degree. Um, but you can really help people in a variety of career choices. So think about what's going to make you unique and why is pursuing that graduate degree going to help you in the future. And then, in addition, topics that you also must cover um, is preparation. So what have you done to prepare for this career choice? So for example, like I mentioned, I had uh, previous human resources internships and I worked at the Career Center. And because of those experiences, that's how I realized I wanted to pursue a, a master's degree in human resources. And really this should be the bulk of your essay. So any experiences you've had, whether it be professional or personal, um, you can include this in your essay to talk about really your story as to why you want to continue your education. 
uh, something to note is you should not just list your experiences. You, you'll list all of your experiences in the activity section, but again, you really want to tell that story as to why you're pursuing more education. So some tips that you could consider covering is family background. So if there's any gaps in your timeline, um, you can talk about that in your personal statement. Um, you, you might consider talking about any individuals or incidents that really has shaped your life and is the reason why you wanted to um, pursue uh, more education. Additionally, topics you may consider covering is explanations. So you can talk about your academic record. So say, for example, if your GPA is lower than the typical student applying to your program, you can talk about that, whether it be report, repeated courses, incomplete withdrawals. Um, you can talk about any breaks in your education or like I mentioned, below average grades. Um, if you feel necessary, you can talk about your low test scores and elaborate how maybe the experiences you've had make up for your lower test scores or your GPA is very high, you're just not a good test taker. You can, again, address that um, in the personal statement. You can address any criminal records or conduct on campus. Um, and you can also address if you're applying to a program for a second time. Um, you can talk about that in your personal statement. So uh, moving forward, tips you could also consider also could cover are traumatic events. Um, and so a lot of the times if someone's per pursuing a doctorate degree in medicine, they had a traumatic event or experience that, um, you could write about that in your personal statement. However, um, it can raise questions to an admissions committee that you'll definitely wanna keep in mind. So a few of the questions might be, is this student still traumatized? How did they recover from this event? as well as what resources did the student utilize to recover. So make sure you include maybe some of the resources you utilize to recover from this traumatic event if you end up wanting to talk about that. Um, and then another thing to note is um, really anything that you talk about in your personal statement can be used in the interview process. So just make sure you'd be comfortable answering those direct questions about the event. Um, so if like the events really, really fresh and you're still upset from the experience, um, make sure that you're able to talk about it in, in an interview. Otherwise, I would avoid talking about it in your personal statement. So some tips that you could cover, but the Career Center and myself um, recommend that you probably shouldn't. So complicated themes, uh, avoid quotes or song lyrics. Uh, my mom loves adding quotes in papers. And when I sent her my personal statement, she of course added a quote from Wayne Gretzky at the end of it. I think it was, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I saw it, I smiled and I texted her, thank you for proofing it, but then removed the quote. Uh, it's just cheesy. You wanna avoid humor because you don't know how it's going to be interpreted on paper. Any sad observations. Um, avoid saying the professor of blank is um, just because, eh, we recommend um, to just avoid that in general. Avoid any negative experiences with any health profession. Um, also, uh, a, lot of, a lot of students who are applying to medical school, for some reason they all wanted to be doctors since they were five, and so that's, that's very generic across the board, and so I would recommend uh, not avoiding, or not including that as well. So, as I, I talked a lot about this, but don't, do not focus on trying to be, you know, unique. Like don't, of course you want to be unique, but just focus on being genuine and telling your story and your personal statement because it'll come across as, um, it'll come across as just like I mentioned, like more genuine rather than if you try to include all these like big fancy words to make yourself sound smarter, of course use a dictionary and of course put your best foot forward, but just tell your story in your personal statement. So I mentioned this, but there's still so many resources that you all can utilize 
to help you with your personal statement. The writer's workshop, you can make an online appointment, which is a great tool. I would highly recommend using it. I've used it. I used it when I wrote my personal statement. Um, and the Career Center is actually still open. Of course, everything's virtual, but you can make individual appointments over the phone. And I mentioned this, but you can submit your personal statement online and have it reviewed in three to five days. And so the link is there. Um, I'll also be sharing this deck with Brian afterwards so you all can take a further look at it. Um, but then something to note is the Career Center will only review your personal statement once. And so when you submit it, make sure you're close to your final draft because you wouldn't want to waste it on something that you just whipped up overnight. And then a few more campus resources that I want to point out. Of course, everything is online. Um, I currently am a mock interviewer. And so hopefully once you write your personal statement and once you get an interview for the school, be sure to sign up for a mock interview through the Career Center. They're all conducted over the phone or via Zoom right now. And they're a great tool to really simulate a real interview with specific questions about your program. Um, and then continue to use all of the resources that the Career Center um, has, even signing up for presentations like this one. And so with that being said, what questions can I answer for you all? Yeah, Colleen, you said that uh, the Career Center only reviews your personal statement once. Um, if you're applying to different programs that have completely different, I guess, like motives, like say, for example, the Peace Corps and a graduate program, will they review different statements for each of those applications? Wow, that's actually a great question. My initial answer is going to say no. I believe they'll only review it once per student. I, I, I'm not sure if the system would even let you submit it more than once because everything's conducted online. I will ask that question to my boss because I'm not positive and I'll contact Brian and then if that's okay with you, Brian, Brian will send it out. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and that is more than okay with me. Any uh, follow-ups, resources, I'm happy to get to students afterwards. Thank you. What other questions can I answer for you guys? So Sarah, I saw your question in the chat. So when you say the reason you're interested in the program, would you say something like about a family background history that inspired you to be an unique enough? Um, do you mind elaborating a little bit on your question? 